Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be making some taco pull apart bread. Now I've never done this before, but I found this recipe and it looks really easy. But it also looks really yummy. Now for this recipe, it does call for sourdough bread. You need a loaf of uncut sourdough bread. I had a loaf of sourdough bread for this recipe, but my older son ate it last night, apparently. So I had to go back to the store, and when I went back to the store, they didn't have any more sourdough. Now when I went to the store before, I did pick up a loaf of this Tuscan, this Tuscan loaf right here. So I do have that. It's a nice, dense bread. And I also picked up um, this loaf of Italian bread, and it, it had to be unsliced. So they did have this beautiful loaf of Italian bread. So I picked that up. I don't know if it's going to work as well as the sourdough. I will say that the recipe specifically calls for a loaf of unsliced sourdough bread, which I did have until my son ate the entire thing and then ate a big bowl of spaghetti. So... If you've never had teenagers, you just don't... A lot of people don't believe they eat all the sandwiches I make in my sandwich videos. Yes. Yes, they do. And it takes less than two days. Okay. So I'm going to read the ingredients to you that we're going to need to make this taco pull-apart bread. Now, I want to clarify first. When I say pull-apart bread, I don't mean like, you know when you make monkey bread where you take the pieces of dough and you put them together in a bunt pan and then you add the cinnamon and the sugar or whatever and then it's kind of like sticky and you, you can pull it apart. It's not like that. What it is is we're going to be cutting the bread but not all the way through and then kind of poking the, some of the ingredients down into the bread where we've cut it. So then you can just pull the cut pieces apart. Now to make this, it does call for one loaf of sourdough bread, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it with both of these. We're going to do this one, and we're going to do this one right here. So we have our bread for the recipe. It, all, it only calls for one loaf, though, of round sourdough bread. You're also going to need one half of a cup or one stick of unsalted butter and I have this lovely unsalted butter here that I just picked up today from Lidl because I had some butter in the refrigerator and then I realized it was out of date significantly out of date I hadn't used it in a while so I went and got this fresh package of unsalted butter so we're going to need a whole stick of unsalted butter you also need two tablespoons of taco seasoning. You can, it doesn't specify, you can use any kind. This is Casa Mamita, which is from Aldi. This is a little packet that I already had in the, the uh, cabinet. This is just the low sodium taco seasoning mix, but you can use any kind. And you're gonna need two tablespoons of taco seasoning mix. You're gonna need a half a cup of diced onion and I don't like cutting onion so while I was at Lidl I also picked up a package of cut onions I think this came from Lidl it was either Lidl or Publix I don't remember but anyway you're going to need one half of an onion diced this is okay I'm sorry yeah a half of an onion diced so I'm going to have to guess. It doesn't really matter with this one though because you're just going to be kind of putting it in there according to what you want it to be like. So if you want more onion, you can use more or you can use less. You're also going to need one jalapeno diced. Now, I I get no, I did get these from Lidl. Yep, these are from Lidl. I got a little package of jalapenos here. So we're going to take, well since we're doing two loaves of bread, maybe we'll dice up two of these to put in there. Um, and I guess since we're doing two loaves of bread, we will need the equivalent of an, an entire onion diced. Well, you know me, I don't like being very exact, and I know that drives some people crazy, but it's not likely to change. Um, okay, and then we get into the cheese for this recipe. I love cheese. You're going to need Colby Jack shredded cheese. And here I have some from Happy Farms by Aldi. I already opened it because I ate some. This is a blend of Colby and Monterey Jack finely shredded cheese. 
Now you're going to need a half a cup of this, but since we're doing two, we're going to need about a whole cup of this shredded cheese here. Fortunately, we have three. Well, minus what I ate, but we won't need all that. We also need a half a cup of mozzarella cheese, and this is some I had left over from another recipe I did, and I had this left over, so that's going to work out great. I think I'm going to need about a cup of that also because we're doing the two loaves. There should be at least a cup left in this package. But this is also Happy Farms by Aldi. So that's our cheese. And then they have some suggestions for the toppings. And kind of like a taco, you could top it any way you want to. This recipe suggests things like pico de gallo, which I have here. Isn't that pretty? Look at all the pretty colors in there. I bought this at Aldi. They have really good stuff like this back in the section where the cheese is. Oh, and they have different things throughout the year, and I like to try some of the different types of things they have back there. This is tomato pico de gallo, but they also have a mango uh, pico de gallo, but I have not tried it. This one is really good. Sometimes I'll just eat it with some tortilla chips. They suggest that. Sour cream right here, which I typically don't put on my tacos, but I might try it. This is a little package of sour cream that I picked up at Lidl. Um, it also says you can use cilantro, but I really don't like cilantro, so I'm not adding that. There's, I mean, there should be some in here. That's about all I want. Or you could add queso fresco. Um, the recipe also says you could add seasoned ground beef to it to make it like a whole meal. Um, we're not going to be doing that because I don't actually have any right now. We're just going to leave it the way it is. Um, it also says the mozzarella cheese gives it that great pull effect when you pull the pieces of bread apart. But it said you can feel free to use your favorite cheese, just whatever you want to. And the recipe is very versatile. You could add extra stuff. You could take stuff out. Um, I found this when I was at Publix trying to get another loaf of sourdough bread unsuccessfully. I found this Ortega Street Taco Sauce Mojo Chile Lime. And I've never tried it, but it looks yummy. I thought I would try a little bit of that. Now, normally we would put the toppings all over the bread, but we're not going to do that because I want to save this for dinner time. And um, I'm just going to put, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try both pieces of bread, both types. I'll put just a little bit of toppings on one little section of each loaf to try but I want to leave the rest of it untopped so you know it won't get soggy before dinner so we're just we're gonna make everything else but we're gonna add toppings only on a little spot of each loaf another thing I thought that you could do with this recipe too is to get something like this this is the um, the fresh mild salsa that they have at Aldi this is fresh cut salsa uh, never canned. You have to keep it in the refrigerator. It is so good. I love this stuff so much. They also have a medium, but I really like the mild. I thought you could just pull the pieces of bread apart and just dip it in here or, you know, put it on top of the bread. I thought that would be a nice thing to try. So I may try that with a little piece of bread. So really this recipe is great because you could do any number of things with it. You could make this a side dish as part of some other meal, or you could just make this your meal, like add your ground, ground beef to it. It could just be a meal all by itself. So now we have to start cutting the bread. And I discovered the only bread knife I have is this. We never buy uncut bread. But both of my children have discovered they love it, so they want me to keep going to Publix on a regular basis and getting those loaves of sourdough bread because they both love it. So I may have to get a different kind of knife, but right now we're going to be using the one I have, which is this little Farberware doohickey here. This little, little fella is going to do it for us. We're going to cut in here, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, we have our lovely bread here. Look, isn't it pretty? It's beautiful. It looks like something out of a magazine. It's like the bread they used to have in, in TV shows back in the 80s. <laughs> now, all I have is this little knife, like I said, and I'm not that great at cutting stuff. Other than myself, I seem to be really good at accidentally doing that. So we're supposed to cut it diagonally without going all the way through about an inch 
apart going one way and then we're going to go the other way but you don't want to go all the way through the bread so about an inch you know you don't have to be perfect but don't go all the way through I know I'm cutting wrong but you can't tell me <laughs> get carried away and cut through. I almost did there for a minute. And remember we have to go back the other way too. About an inch. Diagonally one way and diagonally the other. Because we're trying to make one inch squares with this bread. You have to kind of hold it this way. This is a little harder. But I tried to find a good dense bread that would hold together. hands are clean I promise I just washed them because I had to dice those jalapenos well I mean I would have washed them anyway I I wash my hands every six months whether they need it or not I feel bad putting my hand all over this bread but you have to to hold it together oops especially the <laughs> the more you cut Piece wants to come out already. I'm gonna turn it again. I'm trying to. I think I'm really only gonna be able to cut it one more time. Right here. Okay. Awesome. Well, you know, I think I think this knife did just fine. I've never actually used it before. It was part of a set that I got as a gift, and I've, I don't think I've ever actually used that one. I think that that did all right. So, but then, you know, we're going to have to kind of pull these parts. We're going to have to pull them apart to put stuff down in there. But let's go ahead and cut this other one. I'm going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to just have it kind of like this so I can cut this way. Okay, now this, this is the Italian bread. I was hoping not to have to go long ways. I tried to cut that at more of an angle, but it ended up going kind of straight. Well, you know what? We won't tell anybody. Well, that skin on this bread is, the crust is thick. One 
edge pieces. That's um, that's my interpretation of an inch. <laughs> that's my artistic expression. Don't judge me. This bread has a mind of its own. I'm not going to cut myself. I'm willing it to be so. I feel like I'm making something for the Super Bowl. I don't know. <laughs> this would be a good little Super Bowl party snack, though. I don't know much about the game. I usually just sit there drinking a beer going, now why is everybody cheering right now? And then I proceed to just go to sleep somewhere. Okay. Well, that's not bad. I mean, it, yeah, they're not exactly an inch, but that's okay. Look at that, isn't it pretty? These pieces are trying to stick down. Stand up. Okay. So now what do we do? Well, we've cut the bread. This one's a little more obvious. <laughs> now, let's see. We have our stick of butter here that's melted. You're gonna take your, your melted butter. And that you're gonna you're gonna whisk in two tablespoons of your taco seasoning. And that's going to be enough to do one, and then we're going to mix up more for the other one. Mix it in thoroughly. That smells really good. We're going to let that sit for just a minute. While that sits, we're going to take our diced onion and our jalapenos and stick them down in the crevices of the bread. Now I've never done this before, so we're just gonna take some of this onion and I'm just gonna sort of drop it down in there. We'll start with the onion and then we'll go to the jalapeno. Just kinda I'm just dropping it into the little crevices. And don't forget the edges. so good so I'm gonna I'm gonna dress this one up first and do the butter and taco seasoning mix and then we will do the other one I'm not a big fan of jalapenos but I'm gonna do it like the recipe says Up, I diced one jalapeno for each of these. So I'm just going to roughly put half of it down in here. Okay. So there's that. Okay. I took the mixture of the butter and the taco seasoning and I put it back in here because you're supposed to pour it down into the crevices and I thought with this little little part here it might make that a little bit easier to kind of judge where it's going and control it a little bit better. Now I'm gonna mix up some more of this for the other one. This is all just for this one. Get the little edges. Okay. 
Now, now that we've added that, we've got all that down in there. We're going to stuff the cheese into the crevices now. So I'm going to start with mozzarella. So we're going to start with the mozzarella. Now I have enough in here for both. So I'm just going to... I, I don't think it matters how precise you are. You can be as precise as you want though. You know, I certainly don't have a problem with that. I, I know people that are remarkably they have a surgical precision when it comes to cooking anything and everything has to be exact and and I just don't. I, I don't know. My mother was the same way. I guess I got it from her. I used to watch her cook and for most things she just kind of went by feel. You know, she just kind of knew, especially if it was something that she made a lot, she just kind of knew, you know, how much went in there and when to stop and she didn't really worry about making it exact. We're just shoving it down in there. It's, it's kind of slimy. <laughs> okay. Now half of this is for the other one. I want to make sure to save some, but I don't think you can ever have too much cheese. If I don't have enough, I got a whole bag in there. I'll put more in here. Okay. So, there's the mozzarella, and now we're going to do the Monterey Jack. Now, the mozzarella, the Monterey Jack is finely shredded, so it's a little, a little different. Or, I'm sorry, Colby Jack, not Monterey Jack. Well, there's Monterey Jack in here, but also Colby, which is why they call it Colby Jack. Not a very creative name, but it is memorable. I don't think I got any mozzarella. Yeah, I did. There's mozzarella in there. I think more of it's going on top than in the crevices. That's okay. It doesn't matter. You have to stop and think. You know, the things you're worrying about right now, are they going to matter in five years? If not, let it go. Like the song says. Okay. Now, this one is ready. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other one. We're going to start the process all over with this one. And the first thing we do here, again, is the onions and the jalapeno. So, I'm just going to... Ooh, this bread's harder to pull apart. <laughs> it just falls down into the abyss like it's just... just gone. like, what is it, the Marianas Trench in the ocean? <laughs> it just disappears. Okay. That is some dense bread. That's wonderful. You don't often hear of dense being good, but this is good. We'll get a few down in there. Oh, can you imagine how good this is going to smell while it's cooking? Oh, my word. See, I, I grew up in a house with people who hated onion. I never tried onion until I was older. I probably never even tasted onion until I was in middle school. And I discovered that I loved it, and I felt like I had been cheated out of something great. But my mother really hates onion. She despises it. Anything with even a hint of onion flavor to it, she's not going to be happy. Okay. Well, that that's quite a bit down in there. Get in there, you little bits. This bread holds together really well. Okay. Oh, I made a mess. Look at <laughs> I did. Okay, now we'll put some jalapenos. Stick them down in there. 
Yummy. Yeah, I think the first time I had onion, I was at a friend's house for the weekend. I think the first onion I ever had was on a burger. I think they were cooking out. I think we had burgers. And I didn't ask for onion. I think it just got put on there. And I thought, well, I'll eat it to be polite, but onions are awful. Although I thought it smelled really good. And I tasted it. Oh, I was blown away by how good it was. I love it. They may not be great for your breath, but I love the taste of onions. It's so good. Let's just nestle those little pieces down in there. I didn't cut it there. That's all right. It, I don't think it's gonna matter. There. Now it does say that you can freeze this, like you could just not bake it and then freeze it and then get it out and thaw it and then add everything and cook it. If you want to make it ahead of time, you can do that. If you, if you know that you're not going to have time to do all this when you want it, you can just do this part first and then just freeze it and save it. Okay, now the next step again is to take your stick of melted butter right there and add your two tablespoons of taco seasoning and mix it up. I'm going to make sure to blend it well. do just trying to pour it straight from here. I don't know. Oh, I don't like that. It's hard to mix it in there. <laughs> but that taco seasoning settles very fast. Oops, <laughs> don't get too full of yourself. Down in the crevices. I'm just trying to dribble it down in there. In five years, it won't matter. Shoot, in five days, it won't matter. Okay. Yeah, if you ever start to get stressed out about anything, just ask yourself, is it going to matter in five years? If not, let it go. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to transfer this to a pan. Will it fit? We'll find out. I probably should have just started with it on the pan, but that's okay. All right, and now you wanna cover this with aluminum foil. I'm gonna be using this, which I found in a drawer. Great value, heavy duty aluminum foil. So we're gonna get that. So you're just gonna take your aluminum foil and you're just going to wrap it around your bread. You don't need to make it tight. You're just trying to cover it a little bit. Okay, there's that one. Now we'll do the other one. Okay, I have a larger pan for this one because it's just a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to be, I'm going to be very careful. See? Easy does it. And I have a piece of foil for this one too. Look at that beautiful shiny foil. Now I'm going to fold it over, making lots of racket. 
and then we'll have it ready. Oops, I almost forgot the cheese on this one. I don't know, I was so preoccupied by the foil. The foil got me, I'm sorry. I know you're sitting there going, Mary, the cheese, what are you doing? I got it, because I, well, I got to looking at these bowls and I thought, why do I have so much cheese left over? And then I realized, well, it could be because you didn't put any on one of them. Mightn't it be that? And I said, yeah, it might. So I do, I do apologize Not for that. I don't care if it's on top. This bread is harder to pull apart. It's a little bit more stubborn. Well, we're, yeah, I was looking at those bowls going, gosh, that's a lot of cheese left over. Okay. I'm sorry, you may hear some hooping and hollering. My neighbor's out there putting out more cow manure in his backyard for no apparent reason. He's put out another 12 bags today, and I don't know why he's not doing anything with it. He just walks around on it. Why do these people, why do I end up with weird neighbors everywhere I go? Okay, that's the uh, Colby Jack. And then we have some mozzarella. I'm gonna tuck that down in there too. The Italian bread was a little easier. This you really have to pull to separate the pieces. I might not have cut down far enough. So you want you want to cut down pretty far, but you want to make sure you're not cutting down so far that you're cutting all the way through the the loaf of bread. It's tricky. Well, not really, but you just have to be mindful of it. I don't know that I'm going to need as much for this loaf. Okay. Nice. All right. Yeah, definitely don't want to forget the cheese. This is my favorite part. <laughs> little bit here in this little crevice. Cram it down in there. All right. Now I'm going to transfer this back over to the pan and we're going to cover it again. Okay, I have transferred it back over to the pan and I'm going to take the same piece of foil and cover it over. There we have both of them again. This one now has cheese on it. And we're gonna bake these in the oven covered at 300. We're gonna bake these in the oven covered at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. And then we'll come back and see how they look. Oh, there they are. Look at that. They don't really look all that different. They smell so incredibly good. Oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how good these smell. The whole house smells so good right now. It's, oh, it's, it's lovely. I cannot wait to try a little bit of each of these. What we do now though is we're gonna leave them uncovered and we're gonna bake them for another 15 to 20 minutes or until the cheese is bubbly and the top is golden brown. So let's do that and then we'll come back and take another look. Well, here we have it. It looks like some of these parts kind of separated right here. They just kind of fell over, but I figured they would as it baked. It smells incredibly good. It's really, oh, it's warm and I bet it's delicious. So now we're going to try a little bit of each. Okay, we're ready to try it now. I have both of them here 
and I'm going to pull them up. I'm going to pull apart. I'm going to start with the round one and I'm going to pull. Oh, it just lifts right off. Look at that. And I'm going, to, I'm just going to try this with a little bit of salsa, like just, I'm just going to put a little bit of salsa on it. Oh, it's so warm. And remember too, we have the taco seasoning and the butter, um, onions and jalapeno and the cheese as well. So I'm just going to try it because I don't really want to put any on the bread because I don't want to make it uh, soggy before dinner tonight. Mm. That's really good. <laughs> That's fantastic. Mm. I don't know that I'd want to put ground beef down in there. Personally, I feel like that would almost be too much because you already have all that cheese and the other stuff. It might be really good, but I, I think I would like to have the ground beef maybe on the side or something. I don't know, but that's, that is fantastic. Oh, that's so good. I like it too with a little bit of salsa. I really like that. Now I'm going to try the Italian loaf. I'll just pull that off and it just has to reach down in there to get the rest of that piece. It, uh, it just sort of popped off halfway. So I just put a little bit of that fresh cut salsa on there. Mm. Okay, that may be my new favorite, my favorite new thing as far as stuff to try. That's fantastic. That is so good. And it was so easy. There was really nothing to it. And look at this pretty thing. Look at that. It slides on here, but it's just beautiful. Oh, oh my gosh, that smells so fantastic. Look at that one. Ooh. Oh, that's wonderful. I have to tell you, this is a fantastic recipe. And again, it's so easy. Now, you are supposed to use sourdough bread but my son ate the sourdough bread and they didn't have any more. So I went with two different kinds. It was still good, it was wonderful. I really enjoyed it. I will put the recipe in the description. <clears throat> if you would like to try it, it will be down there and you can give it a shot. And of course, again, you can top it with anything you want to. So I'm, I'm tickled to death with this recipe. I think it's great. So um, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it. It was a nice recipe. It's perfect for this time of year. It's kind of light and, and just lovely. It's fantastic. But thank you again so much for watching. I really hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.